I'm Antonio Maciel. For the past two years, I've been an independent consultant working with nonprofits and foundations. Prior to that, I spent 12 years at the Open Society Institute, uh, where I initially went to head up the Emma Lazarus Fund, uh, which was a $50 million initiative set up by George Soros to help immigrants affected by welfare reform back in 1996. But my involvement in philanthropy related to immigrant and refugees uh, uh, goes earlier than that. I initially came into the field as a program officer at the George Smith Gilmore Foundation here in New York, where I was responsible for their portfolios on lesbian and gay rights and on immigrant and refugee rights. And uh, this was, I believe, in 1994. And at that time, uh, there were few funders in the area of uh, immigrant and refugee rights, the most notable of which uh, was the Ford Foundation. At that time, the program was headed up by Mary McClymont and um, uh, several others, including the Joyce Merskimo Foundation. And several years earlier, Mary McClymont had actually started uh, Grantmakers Concerned with Immigrants and Refugees as an affinity group to both uh, bring attention to the issues and to encourage funders uh, to, to uh, fund in this area, as well as to provide support to the, to the funders who are already supporting this area. Uh, I worked very closely with Mary McClymont at that time, and I remember one of the first things we worked on together was uh, the publishing of uh, Geister's first publication, which was a small booklet called Reweaving Our Social Fabric that Geister produced in conjunction with uh, Hispanics and Philanthropy and Asian American and Pacific Islanders and Philanthropy. At that time, uh, Geister was a very small, loosely uh, put together network of funders who were either funding in this area or were interested in this area and it was all volunteer-led. Uh, Mary McClymont, as a founder, was also the organization's uh, uh, volunteer secretariat. And uh, we um, you know, would have um, uh, meetings or conference calls uh, and work on several different projects with a handful of funders that were interested and that were working in, in, in this area. Another person who was very active at this time was Taryn Higashi, who at the time was at the New York Community Trust. But in 1996, after the passage of welfare reform, um, uh, when George Soros set up the Emma Lazarus Fund as a one-time $50 million initiative to help immigrants that had been affected by welfare reform, I left the George Smith Gilmore Foundation to head up uh, the Emma Lazarus Fund at the, at the Open Society Institute. Um, uh, coincidentally, it was practically at the same time that Taryn left the New York Community Trust to take over the immigrants' rights portfolio at the, at the Ford Foundation. Um, and Mary McClymont uh, was no longer the secretariat. Uh, she, she resigned from being the secretariat of the organization. And I became secretariat uh, on a volunteer basis for, for GSER. I think at the time when uh, I launched the Emma Lazarus Fund, uh, GSER ended up playing a very important role, uh, both at a uh, substantive policy level as well as uh, at an organizing level. Uh, one of the main challenges I had at the Malazos Fund was to move $50 million out into the field quickly. Uh, and I relied very heavily on the advice and expertise and brainstorming with my colleagues uh, 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 in philanthropy, many of whom that I had met through activities uh, that we had done together uh, uh, in GSER. And uh, it was through a series of meetings, both uh, formal and informal, with these colleagues that the strategy for the Emma Lazarus uh, funding evolved. But also, the Emma Lazarus, uh, the, the, the uh, Grand Makers Concern with the Americans and Refugees, uh, played a much more important role than just helping me figure out the, the, the funding strategy. Uh, since a large amount of the money uh, of the Emma Lazarus Fund was granted out in the form of re-grants to intermediary organizations, many of which ended up being community foundations, GSER ended up being an important partner in both uh, providing technical assistance uh, and in educating many of these foundations that prior to this really had not been that, that involved in funding in this area. Uh, and then also in promoting uh, the issues uh, uh, more broadly within philanthropy and to encourage other funders to come in. Many of the grants that we awarded were, were, were challenge grants or matching grants, so we needed to, to recruit other funders uh, to this issue. Um, as an affinity group, uh, uh, GSER really performed that role um, uh, uh, in a very um, high, highly visible and important manner. 
Um, it was also during the early years of the Emelagis Fund uh, that in conversations with Taryn uh, and some of the other uh, board members of, of, of GSER, we decided that uh, the time had come to really professionalize uh, uh, and to staff up uh, uh, GSER. So we started interviewing um, uh, candidates and through that process uh, ended up hiring Darren e. Uh, who I think was the most fortuitous and a very lucky hire because she has really taken the organization to a whole nother level in the years uh, 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 since the early days of the Emma Lazarus Fund uh, and really have, has served an important resource both as an advocate for these issues within philanthropy um, uh, and as a, uh, a network and resource for those who do fund this issue uh, or those who are, uh, are thinking about funding this issue. Um, it is, uh, uh, when, when the Emma Lazarus Fund wound up its operations uh, in 2001, GSER also entered the picture in a very important way because with the loss of the funding of Emma Lazarus Fund, a lot of the foundations uh, and the community foundations that had entered the field really needed to look carefully and, and, and to do a lot of work in trying to replace some of the funding that had come from Emma Lazarus Fund from other sources if they wanted to keep funding in the area. And, and GISA provided not only a vehicle uh, in, uh, through which to contact and to work with other foundations, but also uh, a, a um, an advocate in and of itself to promote this issue among, among philanthropic entities. Um, when the Emma Lazarus Fund uh, wound up its operations, I stayed at Open Society Institute in several different capacities, none of which were totally related to, 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 to immigrant and refugee rights, though I continue to be involved, uh, albeit a bit more tangentially, in the activities of, uh, of GSER. Um, it was very satisfying to see how over these years the organization has really grown. Uh, it has staffed up. Uh, Darren e and the board have both provided an incredible amount of leadership. Uh, and from our you know, humble beginnings uh, in the early 90s and with one small booklet uh, publication to what now is a, a, a pretty large amount of, uh, of uh, reports, analysis, uh, um, publications, uh, as well as the support, the biannual conference that, that the GSER has for its members, it's really gratifying to see how this organization has really uh, grown and continues to thrive. Uh, I had the opportunity two years ago to attend the most recent uh, uh, biannual GSER conference, and for me, I think it was uh, one of the most gratifying things there was to see the mixture of funders uh, that go back you know, 15 years or more, uh, 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 Jerry Mannion at Carnegie, uh, Taryn Higashi, uh, um, now at Unbound Philanthropy, but, but, but who was at Ford for many years, uh, but also to see involved uh, and very active in GSER a whole new uh, uh, group of funders and foundations that uh, uh, have taken up this issue as an important issue to continue to fund. Uh, so I think that, that, that GSER still uh, continues to provide a very important role um, uh, and hopefully will continue to do so and continue to promote the issue more broadly within philanthropy.